We begin this discussion of AutoCAD, Revit, SketchUp, parametric modeling, and management of spatial databases and spatial space in a familiar place, AutoCAD. Um, and I want to point out the concept of understanding what is your base engine for knowledge, for understanding basic 2D shapes it needs to be developed by you. Uh, work with more than one engine, but we're going to assume it's an AutoCAD and we're going to go over here now and talk about some of the things that you can do to, to make things smoother as you go from one place to the other. The first one, if you're just dealing with shapes, is to purge out your database. And so purging out all your blocks. Okay, so I'm going here to here. Purge. Purge all items. Purge out your layers even. You really don't need all the layers in there. So you can go to your layers. Purge out all your layers, purge all items, purge all, sure, yes, close. Now, as you look here, because the current layer is center line and object, you need to make sure that everything is purged. And we're going to go here, and because something was frozen, it was not purged. And because your current layer was on something else, it was not purged. And you go back now, and you hit E cross, or you just start with the database that's purged in the first place. So purge, you're going to purge all your layers. Purge everything and you're going to purge all of your blocks. So purge all, purge all items, and you really don't need to do more than that. So now you're looking at layer zero and your blocks, checking what your blocks are, you see there are no blocks. So now you can start with a clean slate and it is worthwhile to perhaps use one drawing to carry around all of your blocks so you're not dealing with individual blinds drawings so i'm going to just go ahead and draw two shapes that we've talked about before i'm going to check what my units are and understand that probably i believe architectural units are probably the best if you're going to be dealing in a unit basis uh, of inches in sketchup as well and in um Revit as well. So I'm going to go ahead and now just draw two basic shapes anywhere I want on the plane. I'm going to go ahead and draft here what we did in class, which was an at 6, 4, and then offset 1 quarter inch. Zoom window. And I'll then also draw a 6 by 6 and then eventually a W shape. So I'm going to go here arbitrarily again at 6 comma 6. I'm going to offset this one 1 half inch. 1 slash half inch. So going ahead and getting your shapes and then then defining and I'll do one more which was a W shape and a W shape this is going to be arbitrary for now. I'm going to make it at something similar. I'm going to make it 12 by 1 inches on there and I'm going to copy this from here at I want it to be 10 inches to the north I'm sorry 11 inches to the north I'm going to draw a line from the midpoint to the midpoint I'm going to offset that 0.5. And I'm going to finally fill, finish this one out by having it just to be base entity. So I'm going to explode the flange, explode the second flange, break from here to here, break from here to here, erase, fill it, radius 0. Though later on you'll see there's not a radius in there, but there is an odd shape which has to do with stress concentration. And I've got now three blocks which I can now define and then even get rid of them on the drafting plane as I save this drawing, which I can then import into SketchUp. Now, that said, I believe that this and this machine, I do not have a pro version, and I do not have six, so I can't actually even do these imports, but we'll see what we can do. Just to realize that when you insert or import an AutoCAD drawing into SketchUp 6 or SketchUp 8 Pro, 
all the blocks come in as components. And so what I'm going to do right now is go ahead and define those. And remember that you know how to make a block by minus b, 6, learn how to not use spaces, 6 by 4 by 1 quarter. Invalid block name because it doesn't like the slash. So we're going to go 6 by 4 by a half. That's 0 by a half. So we'll see why it didn't like that. Insertion base point, shift right click, mid between two points from the midpoint of that to the midpoint. So getting those midpoints figured out that you really know where you're defining things and then grab your objects. There's one block and it is, you notice not on the plane, minus B is the best way to define a block. We're going to go six by six by a half. The last one was actually wrong. It should have been a quarter. So shift right click for the midpoint, mid between between two points from the midpoint. And that kind of defined snap is something that you will miss when you're in other engines. And one more time, minus B, a W12 by something shape. We can figure that out by, I'll say 50. Shift right click mid between two points, shift right click midpoint of that, shift right click midpoint of that, and then select your objects. What you'll find now is you do not need to have them on this plane um, when you save this drawing. So now I'm going to file, save as, and I'll save this as some basic blocks. You essentially have made, I'm going to save it as a historically as an 04, what you've done essentially is you've learned to kind of put things in a drawing and actually not see them. That's going to be important when you try to pull things uh, in some logical way with sketch blocks into Inventor, which we're not going to talk a lot about, but something that you're going to see is this great modeler for, for uh, fi finite element analysis. So I'm going to save that in an 04 drawing. You have to know where it is. Let's remember again, file, save as. And you see that those are going to be this base of when you bring things into SketchUp that you can deal with those 2D blocks. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and close this. AutoCAD, you see that was 09, but I saved as 04. I'm going to see whether I've got a pro version of 07 on here. I'm pretty sure I don't have a pro version of 08. I'm bringing that up. And I'll know whether it's pro version by its ability to have an import. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that a little bit, get that down to the sides, remind me later, file. When I do an import, if it allows me the ability to bring in DWG files, which you see it does not. So this is not a pro version of that. <coughs> so I would need a version of 06. There are other ways to go back and forth, and you'll want to know that, but the easiest way is to have an 06. So I'm going to close this out and bring up 08. Also not a pro version, unfortunately. It says it's interested. I'm going to start using SketchUp and realize it would be at this point when you did this next step, and I'll bring that up, that it would bring in those shapes in a 2D, and they would be components. So right here, when I did this, file, import, my set of choices would include some drawings and you'd see that they are not there, though there are middle ground you can do. So instead of that, we'll move on now to remember that we get into SketchUp. So what you will be doing is importing your AutoCADs because you've made everything clean, you won't have too many layers and, and the like. So I can now go to Window here, Entity Invo, Got nothing in the drawing base. Window, model info, always check. We're going to go ahead and start and learn to work in architectural. And I'll just draw a couple of those right now. So how did I go about doing that? All kinds of different ways. But in reality, I can even do it this way. Grab that, go across, which was 12 inches. Move my mouse kind of on that and go one inch. Go across back this other way. If you notice, it's grabbing it, and I wanted to go not all the way. I want to go not six, but 
5.5 inches. I can then go up here if I want, and I know I want to go 10 inches, and I can go here now. At that point, I can start to realize I can lock, but I've got 5.5 inches back up one inch over it. Very similar to AutoCAD, 12 inches back down, one inch back in, 5.5 inches back down. Just taking your hand off the mouse after it grabs that, this is 10 inches back this way. You see it's trying to find its way 5.5 inches and back here and you see it's closed. Now the toughest thing sometimes in SketchUp is then going ahead and defining that's that important part in this block. Remember this is a flat block and I'll first define it as a flat block and then I'll define it the way we talked about which is that one inch definition. So learning to put point somehow in here sometimes so that you can grab this you grab a cross, I'm holding my left mouse button you go on top of it and hit right or hit a G make component, the most important thing here is I'm going to call this as a flat flat W shape learn not how not to use spaces, set component axes try to get something that you understand here and there go ahead and create now you'll see what I created unfortunately I can go back in eventually and get rid of if I want that extra line and I've got that shape which I have now I can go about and use that as well that was the flat shape so remember that this block stuff is also then I'm hitting it I'm going to show you how to do a copy here most of the things that are copy or rotate this is a rhythm not hard to get try to keep relatively the same rhythm within AutoCAD I'm going to select grab my tool which is M for move or that hit a control I'm going to pause here okay so what we've got here is that vertical I'm going to go through it again so you select in this program you grab your tool you hit the control button once for copy and you hold a shift key if you want to hold axes but when I go from here to here now I can go ahead and right click explode I can now push this up as we talked before one inch now this is where again it becomes quite important to set your axes or your knowledge of where you want your insertion point to be depending if it's a column more likely you're going to want your insertion point to be the, the centroid of it down below if it is a beam if you're going to use that as a beam you might want your um, insertion point to be someplace at the mid center or mid top so you'll see that in a lot of these programs you're going to have an ability to change it. In this case I'm going to think of that as being a column so I'm going to learn here to go view, face style, x-ray and once again learn how to get underneath there unfortunately turn it upside down and grab a line this will grab, hold on alright so what we're doing here is we're going in and determining unfortunately determining trying to find these midpoints so we don't lose our you notice there it will grab at some point or perhaps it won't to what would be a midpoint on that so we'll try to go here one more time and you this is why in effect if you notice along here it's finding that finding that and now you've got something you can grab to in your definition if you've got the I'm going to go ahead here turn this thing around and now once again you can define the component so you grab a cross you right click over the top you make component you're going to call that W12 by 50 3D or something like that getting good use to keeping capitalization underscoring a lot of these will be provided within a program if you're doing it or in a library so set component axes now you want to make sure that when you're grabbing that you're actually setting everything correct you create and you're good to go now these things are components 
and you'll see you can then finally go ahead and erase them out just like anything else and realize that they are in fact in your components directory in the model which is the same as the blocks you can click inside a one flat W shape and you can start actually go inside and edit for instance the description this is a W shape example and you'll see later how you name these or how one names this becomes important if you're going to try to do scripting so you can search on the description or search on the name and because things get rearranged the definitions get rearranged keeping track of these names becomes kind of important if you're going to try to do the scripting which in fact is what a lot of this can and should be about is you realizing that spatially you're going to start with some grid numbered A through Z and another access being one through whatever and then also levels which would be all these are different essentially datums that you're dealing with when you're dealing with a complex structural plan so as you have to change the base plates or change the floor heights or change the whatever on a, on a structure that these datums move around with those shifts so if I go here now I've got something remember we can bring in put it to a spot we can also then without we can go to here and hit s for scale and then hold that key and shift it up 120 inches or 120 times it looks like it did it now what you'll finally see is there is some reality of wanting then if you had something like this you might want to then make another block if this is going to be a repeating shape that you might want to play with you can go ahead finally and make one last component so this is concept of nesting components and so I'm going to do this one more time. Hit there, right click, and edit. You see, it won't let you make a component, but what you can then do is you can add one short line, maybe down the axis. I'll make it just one inch. Now you've got something that is a component, it's componentizable. An odd trick, but it appears to be necessary as I go right here, right click, make a component. Once again, you're going to call this a full column. This nesting is something you will do in AutoCAD or in Revit as well, but you want to just get used to the concept here that you can nest things. And you can then have an ability, create, to go back within that block and do the shifts that you need to do. So I'm going to now just turn back off, view, the face style and just go through how we would set up a column plane what I would like you to do is very f first lay in a 2d grid with just lines probably doing that in AutoCAD or learning how to do it that's covered in another video but right now I'm just going to assume that I'm going to put this at 15 foot intervals and then 20 foot intervals going in the y direction so I'm going to select here hit a control key, move my hand over here, tell it 15 feet, not say anything, but then say five times, and I've got that set, and I can take everything here, grab here, holding the control key once, moving it so it's locked, or using the relative coordinates, and tell it 20 feet, I'm going to go 10 times, why does that useful well the reality may be that in the fact when you're done with this you might want to go ahead and go inside one of these things right go inside that block and you might want to take that entity uh, and move it up an inch because of the base plate one inch and then you might want to actually even go inside of that back out I'm going all the way out go inside once and then hit S for scale and bring that down some certain height and that would be a numeric number you would need to know so with that you've got something there what you can then realize is you have this ability perhaps now to now stack up and we'll finish up with this stack up between 
Mathematically, it's going to be easier than otherwise, but go ahead and bring in a block and rotate and expand. So I'm just going to lay a W shape between these two by doing it this way. Window, component, right? Window, components, that brings in, select. I'm going to go ahead with that 3D, and not the full column in this case. I'm going to bring that in here. And this, in fact, is where you'll start to see this concept of grab to. So I'm going to grab that component once, grab the rotate tool, hold the shift key to do your rotations. And then I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees. Much easier done mathematically in a component definition than here. I'm zooming in and out. We'll go ahead and zoom around here a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead now and select that. You'll see later on, this is easier done in most programs by just knowing what your flange height is. I'm going to lay it in snug as it is. As I go here, I'm letting it grab relatively snug here. Won't make it perfect here. Later on, you're going to see that's why, in fact, the mathematics of this is easier than the drafting. And I'm going to go ahead and now slide this thing down as well. I'm grabbing, selecting. You can do this once again in AutoCAD. I'm going to have it try to grab that. And now you see it grab snug. And now I have this ability, hopefully, to grab this, click on it, say S for scale, and now pull it out again all the way till it snugs up to this one. I'm zooming in there, and I've pretty much got right something that I can once again do some sort of connection with. So I'll try to see if we can do that. It should be the same sense of taking that, hitting a control, going across. In this case, it was 15 feet. And how many times? Five times. And the same thing. You'll start to see why didn't we do it another way. We probably could have nested the whole repeating structure first, but I just want to show you how this process is going to work within Revit. And you can then look at the mimicking SketchUp in Revit, or uh, mimicking Revit in SketchUp. Right click, you're going to grab all these, grab your tool which is move, hold the control key once, go from here. This, of course, I think is not, it will be in fact 20 feet. And then I think we said 10 times. How quickly, in fact, you have then something, you'll see that the value is going to be in Revit is this ability to kind of tie some of the rest of the stuff together in terms of making quick changes when you're no longer not just going to have a regular old W shape but you might want to change some sizes. We'll finish this one out the same way. If you think about it, it might be just as easy at this point to take that one, zooming in and out, copy it from there with the control to there, and then grabbing that rotate tool. So you grab the, the item, Grab the tool, hold the shift key to remember you're not going to turn, you're going to turn along that plane. You're going to turn this 90 degrees. You have this concept of grabbing, selecting your grab point, go to there, and you'll see this will be long, but the potential then exists to come in here. And then once again, S for scale, to scale it back down. And you'll realize as you're doing this, the program is keeping track, like we talked about, of a transformation matrix for each of these. And the reality then of taking this, once again, final, final time, taking that. So you select, you grab your tool, you hold the control key for copy one time. You're going to go, once again, 15 feet. I think that will be right. 15 feet. And then five times, probably one extra one there. Can you right click, erase, grab all the way across here. Once again, select, grab your tool, 
hit a control, you're going every, perhaps every 20 feet, and then 10 times. And what you've left, what you've got here is now this setup with one last structural member not included, and that in fact would be what would be the joists or the beams which would be running in between each of these bays. So I'm going to finish this out in a second here, but I'm going to now just build up a structure uh, realizing that you can always make more and more components deeper and deeper. So I'm going to take this structure right now, grab everything across it, go hold my mouse over it, right click, make a component, and I'm going to call it floor component. I'm going to set my component axes like always be very, it's not just the axis, it is a lot of things and you notice there we've got all kinds of, because we shortened that up, I'm going to try to grab the same one which might be hard. Create and now I can go ahead and take this, grab, select, control, bring it up, I'm going to bring it up which I guess this is going to be a 10 foot floor and we'll make it up go up 20 times. Now mathematically you'll see that could have been written in a matrix very very quickly and eventually you'd probably want to go in and change some of those things but what you've got now I'm going to turn off the edges view edge style and turn that off and you can see you've got very quickly this matrix, a true matrix in 3D space, which in fact this will probably take it down, view, shadows, right, view, you know it's going to take out, you've got the shadows working on this, you've got all kinds of stuff you can do with it and you're in that world, but you have a nesting which means that you could go back into one of these and change all of them. So we could go inside, go inside of that, go inside of that, or go off on the side and go inside of that and even take it to the point of just going ahead and if it lets me do this it'll explode do something like that so this idea of repeating and extruding shapes we'll pull that out we'll see whether this thing explodes on me I'm gonna go all the way out the shadows will take things down like always and very quickly you've got some sort of at least odd structure that you know that you can manipulate by manipulating the individual instances. So play around with that and that nesting of blocks both in AutoCAD and SketchUp. Uh, you'll see it will be handled similarly within Revit and something called Families. Learn to work without the shadows on and you'll soon learn that you can kind of manage a lot of this off on the side. I'll show you how that works finally. I can go now back in, go back into Club window, I can go to components, I can bring on my full column component right there which was the one that I screwed with so now I can go into that I can double click inside of that one and I can go ahead and push it back. I don't know what, how I did this but I think I pushed it back there so that sense there, I'm going to do a bunch of undos here in a second but and it fixes everything up. Thanks for listening and that concept of playing around with components, you're going to realize everything I just did would have been somewhat easier done by just a couple of shapes and then some concept of spatial math. Most of those columns are either would be brought in with no rotation, others would have been rotated about the Y or about the Z to make the uh, beams. Finally, I'll point out that we have columns then, we have girders, and then we have beams or joists. And they, it can be the same member that is both but a column has a load predominantly going down its long axis. A girder will hold up other things. It will hold up other uh, members that are beams that are called beams or joists. The beams or joists are things that basically accept a distributed load from the sheathing or from the floor plate, uh, the floor structure above them. So these terms are not the shapes. They are the actual function in the structure that these things perform. Thanks for listening. And enjoy playing around with SketchUp for today. If you're at home, do try to go ahead and do some of this nesting. And if you run out of um, things to do, go out to the SketchUp show on YouTube. And the expectation is that you will be doing that 
uh, and we will report back what you find from the SketchUp show. After this, we'll be going off into Revit, but this concept of how when we deal with these structures, I want you to save what you do today so we can talk about looking at the data that comes out of them. Thanks for listening.